myself. So. Okay. Are you ready? We are ready. Okay, so how did you want to do this? You want me to do a little presentation first and then take questions, or? I think that would work out very well. Okay. Can you hear me all? all yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Great. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. Um, geez, where to start? <laughs> well, let me give you a little tour of, actually, let me start with this. Um, some of you might remember building heap kits, and in fact, how many of there in the room ever built a heap kit? Yeah, almost <laughs> half. Uh, almost half. Are saying okay. That, so. so you might recognize the color of this manual <laughs> and the style of it. Yet, uh, should look real familiar to those of you who have built heap kits before, <clears throat> and that's intentional. That was the assembly manual. We also have a user's manual and a service manual. Complete schematics and um, fold out you know, diagrams of, and a detailed technical description of how everything works. Um, when you get one of our kits, you can, you can get the kit in you know, as a complete kit uh, with pre-built surface mount boards, or um, we never make you load surface mount, so don't, don't get scared off by that. We pre-build the boards that have a lot of surface mount on them. But the kits look like this. So there's a bag of parts, pre-sorted, so you don't have to sort resistors and capacitors. They're in different bags. Although you won't find a 1K resistor in the same bag as a 10K resistor, so you don't have to you can if you want to, but you don't have to measure anything. You can pretty much just pull out the bag and find the part on the board and then load it. And we ship the electronic version of the uh, layout file. So if you're computer savvy, you can just load up the schematic, not the schematic, but the, uh, the board layout on your PC and type control F and you'll be able to find R1 or C22, whatever it is. That's a real easy way to locate parts. And if you've ever built a heat kit, you remember how they used to have um, arrows on both sides of the page pointing to where the part goes in a detailed description like red, green, blue, you know, or uh, red, black, brown to identify a resistor and physically where it goes. So that's a whole lot easier with our kit. Um, that was the um, IF filter board, which looks like this when you're done. This is an older version of it, but you can see the, hopefully, the, uh, this is all through hole, mostly resistors and capacitors, and then on the other side are the crystal filters that can be snapped in, and you can get access to that from the bottom of the instrument. About a year ago, we we were ready to start shipping this thing. I mean, this is the uh, this is the second real product. We've been shipping Sienna, the original Siennas, for you know several years, and decided it was time for an upgrade. So I wanted to find color displays and put a better synthesizer in it and stuff like that. We got all done, but it was still a, a derivative of the original Sienna, which had 65 internal cables in it. Now, if you've ever built a heat kit, it's a little bit like a wiring harness where you have just lots of wires going every which way. Um, but it was very expensive, and so I decided that we really needed to redesign it and use a motherboard. So there's the new motherboard kit. It only has a handful of actual parts on it. Uh, getting pretty good reflection out of that, yeah. but you can see basically the, the motherboard. Um, so let me just kind of point this thing at the radio here and show you what it looks like. There's the front of it, and we'll turn it on here in a second so you can see what it sounds like and looks like. The uh, front panel consists of a couple of front panel circuit boards that are through hall kits, so you get to build those. Those are the ones that are closest to the front panel. And then um, a controller board that snaps into that 
from behind. <laughs> it's hard to look at the picture and do this at the same time. But um, that's the controller board, which looks like this. So here's one that's um, been assembled and by us. Let's see if I can get that on the screen here. And you can see all the surface mount on there. That's a, that's a heavily surface mount board. It has two microprocessors, um, all the electronics and software to control the radio. The one on the on this side, that microprocessor there, handles the keyer and the uh, uh, sampling for the microphone. This microprocessor over here, right, oh, I can't point to it and show you at the same time, but it's the big chip there in the middle. Um, that one handles all of the other functionality in the radio, so controlling all of the other boards. <clears throat> um, then when you, so let me, let me turn this thing sideways here so you can see more of it. I mentioned that when you build the IF filter board, you can get access to it from the bottom. So there you can see the opening for the crystal filters that snap in. And this is a prototype, of course, so it's not, uh, you're not seeing it in all of its glory, but there will be an opening over here for the bandpass filters and the RF um, noise blanker. Now, this RF noise blanker is a, an interesting design. It's kind of unique to us. I think it's been, something similar has been used um, in the military. But what it does is it has, um, you know, it takes advantage of the fact that you've already got bandpass filters at the front end. So you've got the built-in delay to allow a noise blanking signal to, um, you know, get to the point that it needs to blank before the signal gets there. And um, so what we did is we have a mixer in here. Identical to the uh, the one Alcrat uses in their D3. I don't know if you can see that. It's this board right here. Okay. And that chip that does the mixing has an enable pin on it. So we're able to take the uh, detected RF signal and turn off the mixer. And it works extraordinarily well. You don't hear any any artifacts, any clicking, no nothing. It just um, it turns off the mixer and, and the audio is completely quiet. So it's a really interesting RF noise blanker. The board on the end there is the synthesizer and that was a major improvement over the original Sienna. It, it has two uh, oscillator chips on it. Those are five gigahertz internal um, direct digital synthesis, phase lock loop type deals, um, ultra low phase noise, the uh, oscillator that drives them is a phase lock loop that operates from a TCXO or an external source, phase locks to that through these connectors on the back, and uh, generates extremely low phase noise. And since this is a uh, full duplex type of radio, you can transmit and receive at the same time on different bands and different modes. We have to have one for the receiver and one for the transmitter. In addition, there's a bunch of other oscillators there for the uh, other ones used on the receiver and the two, the three on the uh, transmitter. So that synthesizer board generates all of the oscillators used internally. The next board then is the receiver itself. And that is this board right here. That's the FM receiver. And um, the rest to it is basically the, the receiver. <laughs> um, there's a notch filter that you can snap in over here. And I want to point out one other interesting thing here. If you look from the side, you can see kind of a sandwiched arrangement. Um, receiver board on top. Where's my finger? Okay, there we go. The receiver board on top, motherboard, IF filter board, which I showed you earlier. You can see those crystal filters underneath. There's also a front end board. 
in the front <laughs> or in the back of the instrument. And that's a full kit, so it looks like this. All right, and that handles the DC power conditioning input. Let me back up here a little bit. Um, as well as the two preamps and attenuator and the uh, bandpass filters, which I showed you from the bottom, snap into the bottom of this board. This is a fun kit. This is um, all through whole parts, with the exception of two little guys over here that we preload. And um, uh, let's see. So if I show you the rear panel here, let's see if I can get that in there. You can see the various connectors on the back. <coughs> okay. So what I've shown you is the complete receive section of the rig. It's, it's really divided into two, two halves. This half over here is the... Uh, are you still getting this normal... I pushed a button by mistake here and I'll hit it first. So... Um, this is, right here, is the low power transmitter board. We haven't loaded this as yet. It's the newest version of the transmitter, which looks like this. All right, you can see a lot of shielding on there, uh, crystal filters, the, <laughs> um, bandpass filters for the transmitter. It's a very complicated board. Uh, there's no way I would ever make anybody try to load that themselves. We've occasionally had people ask, can I build this surface mount boards too? And there's just no way. I mean, we would, we would be supporting that forever. So anyway, that's going to go here. So all of this stuff in here is the low power version, or the low power section of the rig. The other half is the high power section. And here you can see the... Uh, that's the 10 watt power amplifier. So what comes into there from that other half of the radio is a low power, just 100 milliwatts or so. It gets amplified up to 10 watts by this thing, and that then feeds into this 250 watt amp right here. It's actually capable of about 300 watts, but we're purposely derating it. Um, big fan in the back to get the heat out. This is a low pass filter. Coroids uh, and relays and mica capacitors to handle the, the high voltage. Uh, but one of those, there's like, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bands here that you can um, select. And then the tuner board, the antenna tuner and antenna switch is this last board over here. So this is the, and I should point out this other thing, that is a pretty cool little DC to DC converter. Uh, that's a, all of this stuff in this compartment is a kit. So it's, it's a lot of building and a lot of fun. Uh, we can do the toroids for you if you don't want to wind toroids. But this little gizmo here is a 48 to 14 volt DC to DC converter. And the purpose there is that this 250 watt amp runs on 48 volts. Okay. So what do you do if you don't have 48? Well, the DC power detection circuitry back here on the, that other board I was showing you um, takes a look at what voltage is coming in. If it's 11 to 15 volts, it runs the entire radio on that voltage including the 10 watt amplifier. If you feed in 48 volts, it automatically detects that and switches to this thing, which then generates, passes the 48 volts onto the amplifier and runs the rest of the radio on 14. So it's auto-detecting. So it takes an external supply, something like this one, um, to generate the 48 volts. But it'll take a normal, it's the same connector, same Anderson power pole, connector back here to uh, feed in the, the voltage. <clears throat> All right, so that's what the radio looks like. Let's turn it on. And right now I've got the power switch buried inside because we were 
frantically trying to get this all put together for you. These are color touch displays. Let me see if I can get them to show up where you can actually see what they look like. These are simulated analog meters. Using a color touch display. Okay. So by simply touching either one, either section of this thing, let me see if I can do it here while I'm holding this. It brings up a little menu. This is really hard to do. Of choices, so you can pick, you know, forward power, reflected power, SWR, ALC, compression, volts, driver current, final current, DTMF pad, the DVR, uh, in the future, a pan adapter, S meter, or labeler. On the let's just pick forward power again. On the other side, you got signal strength. If I want to, I could look at reflected power. So now I've got forward and reflected power showing on two meters at the same time. Pretty cool. Yeah. Go back to the S meter. And just to give you a, a taste of this, this isn't done yet. Let's see if I can get it. Um, but we're capable of displaying a pan adapter screen on this thing too. So that's yet to come. And over on the other side here in the middle, this is the tuning section. Is this uh, reading correctly for you? Because it's backwards on my screen. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's right good. here. Okay. All right. So you've got a, a main tuning knob here that gives you either 1 hertz or 10 hertz resolution. And a secondary knob that gives you uh, less resolution. <laughs> So it's pretty easy to move through frequencies. If you push the fast button, then you get faster and faster. So it's it's possible to zip through the frequencies really, really fast with the, the way this is laid out. Okay, now in the uh, in this section right here, this is pretty cool. This shows you, let me get zoomed in on that so you can see it. What you're looking at is a little icon of the receiver, and it's, it's connected to the receive antenna, or this little switch moves up and down, or, and it can be connected to the, uh, the main A or B antennas. The transmitter, which is currently gray because we're not transmitting, you can see the TR relay here, which is not a relay, it's a solid state switch, goes through a tuner and then antenna A or B. So as you select uh, different things, like let me go into the menu and rotate the control and select, I don't know if you can see that, but the receive antenna switch is switching. If I rotate it over to A and B, I can select antenna A or B. So it, it gives you a graphical representation um, real, real easily to, to see of what's connected to what. If you turn on the tuner, you'll see the word tuner off changes to a little conductor and a capacitor, and uh, you can actually, you know, you can move the capacitor to the other side of the inductor. Um, in the menu, and doing so will show up on the, the graphics on this thing. So that's pretty cool. You can change filter selections by just turning this knob. When you have this multifunction switch, it's kind of cool. It's got uh, filter, passband tuning, um, geez, I forget all of them. Let's see. Notch filter, voice recognition, uh, scanning, memory, CW buffers, and so on. 
and in each one of those positions, the function of this knob changes. So it's got a built-in push button switch as well as uh, a knob. And uh, so you can see that if I'm in filter, I can change the bandwidth of the roofing filter, push the button to get to the other one, and I can change the bandwidth of the other filter, the 455 kilohertz filter. The menus are pretty easy to understand. It's just normal English text. Um, like, let's see if I can. I know this is probably very hard for you to read, but it's <laughs> very easy to see here. I can tell you that. Um, let's see what else can I show you. If you hit the band button, you can rotate through the band selections by just turning the main tuning knob. You can also do this with the up and down arrow buttons. And within each band, there are five memories. So, for example, this is 20 meter number one. And as I turn the second knob, I can rotate through the others. And it remembers the bandwidths, the mode, the frequency, all kinds of um, settings for each one of those. This is going, this is also a touch display. Don't have it coded yet but you're gonna be able to just tap a number and change it easily. So in addition to all the tuning you got from the main tuning controls, you can also just tap the front panel and do it. There are two built-in preamps, so I can turn on the first preamp and or the second preamp. If I turn on only the, the second button, that's the attenuator. So I got basically 30 dB of range and RF input RF gain. Uh, the controls are laid out, we think, intuitively. The uh, receiver controls are in a group right up here. The transmitter controls are in a group right down here. All the tuning, receiver incremental tuning, that's all in the middle. And here, the controls are over here. So this is full break in, normal. Volume control, pitch, and speed for the, uh, the keyer. So all of the things that you use the most often are, are easily accessible, and they're spaced far enough apart that big fingers can do it, can hit them without screwing anything up. Um, in addition, some of the stuff that you use often but not as often, AGC, noise blanker, noise reduction, uh, box or push to talk, antenna selections, like I mentioned, those are all along the bottom, and it only takes one menu push to get to them, so it's pretty easy. Most of the menu controls are intended for one-time setups, so there's, you can cycle through the various menus there to set it all up. Uh, let's see. Oh, I mentioned receiver incremental tuning and transmitter incremental tuning. So if I push RIT, actually that's the zip button up there, you see that it makes a smaller version of the receive frequency and shows you the transmit, the actual transmit frequency, not just the um, offset. And you can do the same thing with RIT, where the transmit frequency is saved and you're changing the receive frequency along the top. You can do both at the same time, RIT and ZIT, which is useful working DX. Those are the main features. It's also got uh, voice recognition and voice synthesis, which I can't really demo right now, because the microphone, the voice recognition mic is out of the thing, and the voice synthesis module is not working right, so I can't show you that. But it's a, uh, it's a fairly expensive board. It, it generates um, voices in up to 20 different languages, male or female, in a pleasant sounding voice. So it's not a, you know, it doesn't sound like Stephen Hawking when you're listening to your radio. <laughs> doubt if anybody's on 20 right now, but let's just check. <laughs> Yeah, I don't hear anybody. Please oh, just have a cell for the AM broadcast. Oh, the, uh, 
Distortion is about four times better than most um, amateur rigs, mm -hmm. and we've used really high quality audio components throughout. Um, you can actually run the speakers and the headphones separately. They've got their own separate amplifiers, and so you can, if you want to. I did this for uh, because I always wanted it that way. When I'm doing field day, and I'm in a room where they're you know, we're bringing people in all the time and uh, doing demos. I wanted to be able to, uh, you know, wear headphones and work people, you know, as fast as possible on field day while somebody else is in the room giving demos. It's really distracting. So I really wanted to be able to plug head a headset into this thing without turning off the speakers. And so that that's why I did that. Um, We've got a speech processor. Uh, let's see what other goodies are in here. That's about it. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions? <clears throat> well, uh, let's see. Uh, is it continuous tuning? Uh, Pardon? For, no, it, it uh, runs from uh, about 550 uh, kilohertz up to uh, 30 meg, right? Yeah, actually, it'll go down to. 10 kilohertz. Um, there's not a whole lot there, you know, but you, there's there's nothing to stop it. I mean, it's it's general coverage from below the broadcast band all the way up to 30, and then six meters in addition to that. All okay. mode, AM, FM, CW, sideband, digital, um, and then up to two, either 10 watts or 250 watts transmit on just the hand bands. Yeah, and I, as I recall uh, from looking at your website, you've got uh, warnings uh, right on the band edges. Uh, so that right. You... Yeah. If you get too close, if you get outside of the your your operating privileges, even so, you can enter your license class into this thing, and it will not let you transmit when you're outside your uh, your band privileges. That's cool. Cool. Now, what if they change? Uh, can, can you? Uh, is there soft? Would you have a software update then to take care of those things? Yeah, both processors are programmable through the uh, RS-232 port. We have a USB port on it that's not enabled yet, but um, it will be eventually. Right now, it's just normal RS-232, and there's a utility that we ship with the product that um, lets you download new firmware into it. Do uh, people have questions? How much time does it take to build it? Now that's a good question. Um, do we do we have time between now and field day for uh, for Lloyd to build two of these? <laughs> <laughs> I do that with Scott. Well, let me answer it this way. Um, we're still doing beta testing on it, and you know, so I'm not actually shipping right now. 
like I mentioned earlier, that, that redesign that uses the motherboard and the switch from a 100 to a 250 watt amp, wow, what a lot of work that has been. It's just been mind numbing. Um, for example, <coughs> here's, uh, I mean, just, <laughs> just one little thing, okay, the rear panel has been changed completely. We added more connectors, we got rid of a tray that used to rotate up, simplified the sheet metal greatly, but it required a complete relayout of the uh, of that part. You know, I spent personally now days using um, Onshape, which is a cloud-based 3D solid modeling tool to take the original sheet metal and just put new holes on it and rearrange things. And it's just, oh my gosh, it's, it's, it's mind-numbing work. But it's just about done. And um, so the, the guys are still building the thing and we won't, you know, we won't know for a couple more months just uh, how close we are. So it's, it's been a lot of work, but we're, we're converging at least. So the odds of being ready in time for you to build a couple by field day are kind of low. <laughs> I can mean, go as fast as I can, but you know, it, it takes time. Now the, uh, the basic uh, kit is the receiver, I take it. With, does that include the 10 watt uh, uh, transceiver part of it? No, you, you can order this as a receiver. It's one of the only, in fact it's I think the only um, kit on the market well, so almost on the market, <laughs> that uh, will have the ability to let you build it as a receiver. So we actually, the Sienna showed up in a book on shortwave receivers throughout history um, because it's available as a receiver. And then when you add the transmitter, you get all of it. You get the low power section and the 10 watt stage and all the interconnect cables to put out 10 watts. Then when you order the 250 watt amp, you know, you get the amp and um, actually that's all you get because the uh, you need the low pass filter assembly whether you have the 10 watt or the 250 watt in there and you can order the uh, tuner separately. So, okay. uh, Some of the members I think are interested in being able to computer control and that's not the idea behind this one, I presume. Uh, well, all of, yeah, I mean, I mean it's computer need, controlled yeah. internally, but you can't put it on your own computer. And sure, you can. It's got <coughs> actually. Uh, I think Ham Radio Deluxe just removed the Sienna from its list, but it does support it. It uses the same, and we got to get with those guys and make sure they put us back in. Um, same with DX Lab Suite, so that was supported also. Um, the, oh, what's the other one, SpecReview, that does the uh, SDRIQ external pan adapter, that has a, a built-in support for Sienna. It's the same as the Kenwood and the Elecraft with the addition of new commands that they don't support, obviously. So yeah, you can run it remotely from those programs. Terrific. Another question? Yeah, I had a couple of questions, actually. Uh, the first one is, how many conversions is a receiver? I noticed you said it had a bandpass tuning function. Uh, the next question, of course, would be, is it a full DSP IF adjustable? Third question would be, the band scope, is it a, uh, uh, a, a real-time band scope, or is it a, a recording, and then you get to view the recording, like on a 746? And then my okay. last... I can't really hear that. Can you repeat the question, Jack? Yeah, yeah my, first of all, conversion. How many conversions? Yeah, how many conversions is a receiver, my first question. And then double you, conversion. It's a double conversion. Okay, and one of them is DSP, is that correct? Um, actually, it's a, it, the BHI module is an audio DSP processor, so it's a, it's a true super hat radio with noise reduction at the audio stage. It's very good audio reduction, or noise reduction. Uh, the first IF is 9 megahertz, the second is 455. 
And the transmitter uses a completely different set, um, 11.985 megahertz and, uh, let me think, 60, I think it's 61 megahertz, so they both are double. Okay, so the bandpass tuning is, is audio spectrum as opposed to IF spectrum. Right. Now, we do have provision in here. I can't show you because it's underneath the motherboard, but um, there's a provision to add an SDR in the future as a secondary receiver. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Okay. And then my, my last question uh, is, I noticed that you had on that particular board that the filters were on the bottom and you had other, right. uh, other components on the top. Now, is that a layered board where there's going to be components sandwiched between the two surfaces that you might have to worry about if you're getting the board a little bit too hot when you're soldering? You mean, is it a multi-layer board? Right. No, this is a double-sided board. Okay. Yeah, I've built kits where they've had a, a multi-layered board, and if you're not careful, the material that's in between the two boards will fall away, and then you're, you're, you're done. Dead. <laughs> you're dead. Well, yeah. Now, these are pretty high-quality boards. Um, we made sure of that. Everybody's commented who's built this stuff on the quality of the boards. They're made by Express PCB in Oregon, so... We've tried to do as much U.S. manufacturing as we can. Obviously, the parts come from all over the planet, wherever you know they come from. Uh, we, we mostly order from Mouser, DigiKey, Allied, Newark, uh, the usual places. The front panel is made. Front panel Lexan overlay is made in uh, Illinois. The sheet metal is made in Golden, Colorado. Circuit boards in Oregon. Um, you know, so and we've, we've tried our very best to make this thing a U.S. manufactured kit. The uh, one more, one more, I guess, while we're at it, the uh, final transistors in that 250 watt PA. You said they're 48 volt devices. Are those the same devices that you would find in the uh, on the Asian market uh, rigs that are coming into the United States today? Uh, no, these are VRF 151s from uh, Micro Semi. Oh, okay. Well, that's all I've got. Thanks, Jack. Thank hey, you. Dave. Dave, stay there one. Stay there. Ask him. <coughs> the, the reviews on his radios are stunning. And I'm wondering, how can he, why is he doing better than the big box manufacturers who have millions of dollars of R&D money? Yeah. What is the advantage of this over the, uh, the big box uh, uh, receivers and, and transceivers? <coughs> other than you get uh, the feeling of accomplishment by doing it yourself. And how is it getting better? better well, numbers? there's several things. One is it's made in the U.S. Second is you do get the thrill of accomplishment. Um, it's a little ironic because the in the 60s, you know, building a heat kit saved you money. I can't promise this will save you money. Uh, in fact, it may even cost more than buying something. But if you think about it, there are, your choice of rig these days ranges from a couple hundred dollars to about 20000 So you can kind of pick your price point. And we're confident that this is a high performance kit radio. So it's like the only kit radio on the planet that's high performance that harkens back to the heat kit days. So, you know, very low phase noise. Um, 250 watts, um, let's see, modern art, uh, construction, color touch displays, um, full duplex, cross band, cross mode capable, um, full, the, uh, the keyer, full break in mode is, you can actually, is so good that you can hear between the dots at 60 words a minute. So if any of you are in high-speed CW with full break-in, it works like a champ. So it's got features not available on any other rig um, at a competitive price point, and you get the fun of building it yourself. Plus, you know, we have builders for hire. They can build any or all of it. And if you should get partway through and decide it's just it's too hard for some reason, um, you can ship it to, uh, you have somebody else finish it for you, including us. So there, there's pretty much no risk. Um, we do have a bunch of people who have 
bought Siennas and successfully put them together. And it's and this one's even easier than the original Sienna because the board there are more uh, surface mount boards that are pre-built and tested. But there's still a lot of kit building to do. It's it's a lot of fun. Approximately how many uh, uh, discrete components? <clears throat> Under a thousand. How many? Uh, which oh, kind of compounds? That that you would have to uh, to put on the boards. Oh, I haven't really added it up. Um, well, you know, a rough. Uh, a is, lot. Is the number of thousand. <laughs> uh, I would say. Oh, I don't know. Let me take a look at one of these boards. Um, Code Let me take a look at this board up close. Okay, that's the. RF front end and the DC power conditioning board, and you can kind of get a feel yeah. for how many parts there are on that one. Oh, and that's out. typical. A few hundred of, there, that's for sure. Yeah, and there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, at least nine boards that you get to build. Some of them are bigger than this, some of them are smaller. Um, it used to take people about 40 hours, 40 to 50 hours to build a Sienna. I think this one will take less time, and it depends on how much you order, of course, too. But um, for a receiver, I bet you could build it in 20 hours. 10 watt transceiver, probably 30, and uh, full blown radio probably still in the 40 hour range. Ironically, that's about how long it used to take people to build an SB-101 or a DX-100. So, some things never change. <laughs> I, I, I built a Heathkit 27 inch uh, a TV over a weekend. So. That was a big yeah, I, Pro probably I, well over a thousand parts. <clears throat> By the way, I forgot to show you this. This is pretty cool. Um, it's compatible with the uh, FH2 keypad, FH1 or FH2, made by Yesu. And you can build your own, too. It's pretty simple. Just a bunch of buttons that um, change frequency. So. Uh -huh. You got direct frequency entry and some of the other uh, functions from that. So yeah, what's the, what's the cost? It, uh, it's compatible with the Heil microphones. <clears throat> yeah, I like Heil microphones and Kent Keys. Uh, we actually are a dealer for them too. The the way this works is um, DZ Kit, D, the DZ Company LLC is the overall company, and then DZ Kit is the manufacturer of the, the transceiver. But we also run the, the e-commerce store, the way, the way you actually order this stuff, is through Valley Hamshack online. And uh, I named that coincidentally after the Valley Hamshack in Phoenix. I grew up in Phoenix um, as a kid, and uh, there was a store there called Valley Hamshack. And when I had the opportunity to create a store of my own here, I called it the Valley Hamshack. Back in Phoenix, it was the Valley of the Sun, and out here it's Thompson Valley, but it still works. So what, how much is this going to cost? So you can actually keep track of our progress on valleyhamshack.com. Uh, just go there and, and poke around and try, you can go into the uh, online purchasing section for the radio and you'll see updates and how we're doing and um, you can test out the pricing of various modules and, and see what you think. Uh, how much uh, is this going to set uh, Lloyd back uh, for the 250-watt uh, unit with the uh, CW uh, filters? Well, the, the filters, you know, can range. They're, they're in-rad filters, so they can range anywhere from, well, I guess, fibroplex now, but they can range anywhere from 115 to dollars to 150 or so. Uh, actually, from about 100 to 150, and you can put four filters at the at the roofing filter point and four more at the uh, second IF. The transmitter comes ready with all the filters you need so you don't have to order them separately. And 
Uh, so you can easily spend, you know, a thousand or more on filters, but you don't really need to. Um, we've got pass band tuning in this thing so that one filter, actually two, one at the roofing filter point and one at the second IF can be uh, slid back and forth against each other to get narrower filters. But if you were to buy the CW, the 400 hertz CW filter and it comes with a 2400 hertz um, 8 pole or 10 pole roofing filter, and that can be narrow also. Um, I think the receiver works out to about 2,000 and then it goes up from there. So it's starting kind of high, but you're, you're paying for the infrastructure of eventually getting a uh, high performance 250 watt full duplex transceiver. <laughs> so it has to be a little bit higher than, than I would like. But that's just the way it goes. Very good. Well, one uh, other question that is uh, what? On the transmit, what's the uh, the bandwidth like? On transmit? Yeah. Um, it's I think it's 2.7 kilohertz. Okay. And you can actually fool around with the transmit bandwidth too. There's a menu setting that lets you tweak the uh, uh, tweak that. How far does it go if you want to run? Uh, but it, that's for uh, sideband, obviously. For, yeah. For AM, it's six kilohertz. How far away will it go for the Voodoo sideband? Voodoo? Yeah, yeah, it's good. There was a question how far will it go for with the Voodoo sideband? Say that again? <laughs> it's new to me. The, the transmit bandwidth, uh, you know, can you do like uh, four kilohertz of transmit bandwidth on sideband, you know, for the Voodoo <coughs> audio on sideband? Oh. A lot of guys are into that now. Voodoo <laughs> audio. Um, <coughs> uh, need a, a, a four uh, kilohertz width. What's the maximum the transmit bandwidth on sideband for doing uh, uh, the, the wide band audio for sideband? Oh, ES the speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah we can yeah. do ES the speed. It's a it's another selection in the menu to turn that on. How far and that would be that would be the full six kilohertz uh, AM style bandwidth. By the way, there's also I forgot to mention there's a separate receive and transmit parametric equalizer, three band parametric equalizer. So on receive you can you've got so many controls in the menu and you typically only set those up once. But you've got um, base, mid range, and treble, and you can set the uh, bandwidth and the um, uh, uh, the volume and one other thing. Uh, the Q. The Q, the center frequency and the gain of the bass, the mid range, and the treble on transmit and receive separately. Uh, let me ask one more question because I'm, I'm curious now. You've got my curiosity up. Uh, what's the uh, ability for the receiver to put a signal into a speaker, you know, is it limited to the, like, is it a one watt audio section for, for receiver output or is it a four watt audio section, you know, and, and if so, can it drive another amplified system that you could, you know, run a bigger receive signal and wider, you know. I mean, okay, you know, so, yeah, it, uh, we run the, the power amplifier, it's actually a, um, I think it's a, made by Panasonic, or I don't remember exactly. Um, it's a four channel, it's a quad car stereo 35 watt amplifier. There you go. There, there, there. Now we're it, talking. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, it's four channels. So two of them are, run, are running the loudspeakers, and the other two are running the headphones. So oh. you can actually plug right. speakers into the headphone jack and get quite a bit of. Uh, volume without having any external amplifiers in it. It's also got um, built in um, <clears throat> uh, the term's escaping me right now. Um, limiting. So once the uh, amplitude of the voltage gets close to the clipping point, it automatically keeps it within range so you don't get any audio distortion from. Um, clipping. You mentioned roofing filters. What's the bandwidth on a roofing filter? 
All right, so those are, again, in-rad filters. Um, you can use... All right, so right here are the roofing filters. You can put a 6 kilohertz AM filter in there, anything they've got. You know, so it ranges from 6 kilohertz down to... I think 125 hertz. What did you say the center uh, frequency was on them? Uh, nine. Nine, meg? for nine megahertz for awesome. the AM filter, 9.0015 for the uh, sideband filters, and 9000.75 for the CW filters. That's, that was the scheme for like the uh, like the second or third generation Yezu, wasn't it? Center frequency 9 meg? I don't remember the Yesu. I think the a Yesu used 8.215, which Maybe is the same thing that Ellicraft uses. Um, these are equivalent to the older Tentec rigs. Okay. Well, that's all I've got. Very, very Great radio. Yeah, yeah, it does sound like a, a terrific radio. Do we have any more questions? I, I think you've worn everybody out. Oh, I got questions. <laughs> if you need someone to, uh, to test one out in the field for you, keep me in mind. <laughs> yeah, if you need somebody to do the beta testing, we've got a volunteer for that. Okay. Higher tech. Well, believe me, I want to get this thing done as much as you guys do. And it's uh, it's a labor of love. It's uh, every bit the heat kit building experience. It's um, high quality. You know, like I said, like you introduced me as an HP engineer. So my background is in manufacturing, actually design and support and manufacturing of high quality instrumentation. Um, you look around my sort of shop here and you'll see an HP counter, an HP uh, four channel oscilloscope. Uh, a couple of function generators up there. You see a, a CDMA test set, a uh, high quality spectrum analyzer here, older stuff, power supply, a lot of a lot of uh, Hewlett Packard stuff. Yeah. stuff. Yeah. That's terrific. We should let you get back to uh, working on your designing. <laughs> we appreciate very much uh, the uh, wonderful job you did in explaining things. Is there enough? Does he have a website that we can go ahead and look at? Yes, uh, he does website? have a website. And the web, website, uh, well, I'll let you uh, mention it. It's, yeah, it's www.dzkit. My call letters W0DZ, so dzkit.com. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, the, the Valley Ham, www.valleyhamshack, all one word, dot com for the uh, ordering. And we do, you know, like I mentioned, we carry Heil microphones, Kent keys, um, connectors, adapters, all kinds of stuff, and even parts. You know, I've got a huge inventory of surface mount and through hole parts. And if it's not on the website, but if there's something you need, a lot of times what we can do is tack it on to an order um, that we're replacing anyway through mouse or digikey and get it for you with no additional shipping charges and usually a pretty uh, pretty good price so very good thank you uh, brian wood and uh we'll maybe looking for somebody to, to start one of these kits when you get her all set thank okay. you again